welcome to the Print Design Podcast, the show where we talk about all things print and packaging. We go behind the scenes with designers and talk about the print projects they designed that really rock their world. From file prep to holding the finished product in their hand and all the key decisions in between. So let's talk ink on paper. Todd, welcome to the Print Design Podcast, sir. How are you? Very good, Dave. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm happy to have you, man. Um, I'm a big fan of print, Todd, as I've sort of mentioned a number of times to you. And you guys put together a pretty stellar piece that I am really looking forward to getting into. Um, But before we get into that, tell the listeners about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, Todd Bennett. I grew up in Saranac Lake, New York, right next to Lake Placid. Mm-hmm. Been a lifelong skier, uh, then snowboarder, then telemark skier, and then back to regular alpine skiing. And um, yeah, I think probably uh, definitely a big passion, passionate fan of skiing. And um, although I live in Southern California now, uh, I do appreciate a good frozen mountain or frozen ice rink. Awesome. Uh, so skier, not a snowboarder, right? I uh, used to, yeah, reformed snowboarder. A reformed snowboarder. <laughs> Love it. That's awesome, man. Now, with this print thing, what is your earliest memory of print or packaging or a book or or something like that? What's your earliest memory of that? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, gosh, I don't know. Like, what was my favorite book series as a kid? I remember the Bernstein Bears. Probably the first memory um, in some of the cereal boxes, right? You know, some of the kind of those classic cartoony cereal boxes. Kind of yeah, left this- a pretty big imprint. I also have, you know, I got one other really cool thing. Um, I found some old G.I. Joe like marketing material. So like when you'd buy a G.I. Joe action figure, they'd have the little slip in insert where you fold it out. And it's like all yeah. of the other stuff that you can buy. Um, I actually have that upstairs. That was a, it's like a pretty cool little memento and time machine that, you know, it's got that feel. And in fact, it has, um, I almost did it just as a gag. You could, you could send like a dollar in and get like something from, you know, some address wherever. And I was thinking like, wouldn't it be funny just to like send it in and see if like anyone's actually still managing that, uh, yeah. whatever account that was. Man, it would be like one of those situations where they didn't know where to send the letter that you sent in with the dollar. And right. somehow it would land in the marketing department at GI Joe or wherever that is. And they'd be like, we yeah. got to give this guy a bunch of stuff. Nobody's <laughs> sent this in for years. Right, right. Yeah, be, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like some PO box in Wichita. <laughs> that's so funny. Or just lands in some old lady's PO box and she has no idea why somebody sent her a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> all good man yeah the nostalgic feeling that print can can bring like finding old things like that is is pretty cool it's a pretty special thing for sure so we're talking about old school print now what about recently have you had any recent interactions with printer packaging that you've really enjoyed um you know it certainly has gotten a lot better right i mean even you know obviously i think apple and some of the more premium services just developing just outrageous packaging but you see it like it's kind of bled over i bought an eero you know three repeater wireless mesh system and like Mm -hmm. it had that same just like almost intense perfectly laid out box and thoughtfulness and so yeah i think i mean i think there's some pretty cool high design um i got another book uh called the electric state um which is pretty cool it's it's uh it's like this kind of futuristic dystopian kind of story that's threaded through the American West um, with some great illustrations. So yeah, there's probably like more recent examples. That's cool. And that book, you're going to hang on to that for a long time. I'm sure like people have bookshelves that go back 30 years. Yeah, sure. Old school books and things like that. Right. Absolutely. So where do you um, actually you know what that I'm going to skip that question because we kind of already talked about it. Um, now on the design side, Todd, do you have any design experience with books or packaging? No, I don't. Um, I've got some, I've taken some classwork in graphic design, uh, and filmmaking, but nothing mm-hmm. specific in, in packaging, uh, or, or product. Got it. So how did you, 
I'm going to go back. Like, I, I want to hear a little bit more about the origin story then of Open Road Ski Company and how this book actually came to be. Um, sure. So how did you get involved with this? How did this all come about? Yeah, I was on a um, ski trip maybe four or five years, five years ago with some mm-hmm. friends and we were in central Idaho um, coming up to yet another random ski area on a walkabout. And this ski area is called Tamarack ski area. We'd never okay. heard of it, never been by it. And so um, we kind of get to the base mountain and we're orienting ourselves. And, you know, I was looking at the trail map. Um, I can't remember if it was the paper trail map or posted up on a sign. And I was looking at it and I was like, you know, it's the same guy. And my, my friends were like, what are you talking about? I was like, every trail map looks the same. The only way that's possible is like the same person is designing it. And so kind of did some quick research and, you know, what is probably known to many people, but wasn't known to me was there's an artist named James Nehus that has essentially hand painted almost every ski area in Canada and the United States and several places overseas. So, um, I reached out to Jim cold Turkey, um, kind of a fanboy, and just said, Hey, look, you got some really great stuff. And I, finally figured out that for me anyways, that you were the guy. And, um, but I noticed you don't really have a book of your life's workout. You don't have an, any, you know, you don't have a lot of your art for sale, you know, mm-hmm. a website. I'm not sure a lot of people know your story. And I said, you know, I kind of made the offer. Um, I don't really, I've never published a book, but, um, I'm confident we could put a great story together and make you proud of what we do. And so after getting to know him for about a year's time, he said, let's do it. So we've got a simple contract together and I thought no better place to start than Kickstarter. So <laughs> yeah, no kidding. We, uh, we launched on Kickstarter and um, hope to raise a little bit of money to you know, pre-sale a few hundred books and, and kind of get things rolling. And we just had phenomenal success. We ended up raising almost $600,000 and pre-sold 5,500 books. And uh, that just put us in a whole nother category of, okay, how do we produce this? What, you know, what quality do we need? And, <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, we were going to go to Chronicle and uh, books reached out in San Francisco and several other publishers and said, Hey, we'd love to help. And, you know, we didn't really know exactly. We had some concept designs and some, some work done with a, with a graphic design team that we worked with, but mm-hmm. we didn't have anything really baked. And so we knew there was a lot of work ahead. And, um, you know, ultimately we decided, Hey, like we can, we can lay this out. We know have a, a good graphic designer. Uh, we've got a good writer. Uh, we can, we can put this together and reached out to a friend of a friend who worked at the Smithsonian in Washington, DC, and they had some great publications that they've done and they recommended a print shop over in Italy called Graphicom mm-hmm. and uh, wonderful, you know, great. We just looked as, as probably most folks, well, maybe folk, most folks don't, we just started calling up publishers and said, Hey, can you send us samples of your product? And hit around the edges and man, their stuff was really good. So that's how we ended up going with Graphicom and, and their sixth printing of the book is actually inbounding uh, in two weeks. That, okay. We're going to dive deeper into this, but like as sort of your 5,000, 10,000 foot view description of this, I'm just like picturing you be like, yeah, let's get a few hundred books made. It'd be kind of cool. You put it on Kickstarter. Like what's happening like, are you and are sorry? Are you and Jim on the phone and just like, can you believe this? Can you believe what's happening as you're selling more and more and more? Yeah, you know, we 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 I did the research and did the pre work, so we helped Jim launch his social channels about a couple months before, yeah. and so we started building building up a little bit of a following, which was great. I think maybe we had a, a thousand folks on Instagram and a thousand folks on Twitter, so a little bit of a you know, following there. And what I started to do was direct message all the ski resorts and said, hey, in a week from now, we're going to do a Kickstarter campaign. We'd love for you to push the story. The night before, kind of direct message all of them. In fact, I found the limit on Instagram. Like they'll, they'll only let you cold direct message so many people at a time in a day. So I used up all that limit and kind of um, – so, you know, day one, that was, that was the marketing plan. And so we launched it and, you know, that I, I remember pretty distinctly the night before we – we knew like with Kickstarter, the whole goal is like undershoot your actual goal. We mm-hmm. thought we'd raise $25,000. So it was like, all right, let's put the start, let's start at 10, you know, cause then we, we, we probably can make 10 and back and forth literally on the phone the night before. And I was like, you know, let's, let's drop it to eight just in case I'd hate for us to get to 10, $10,000 and mm-hmm. you know, or, or or, or sorry, we get to 8,000, but we don't actually get to the 10,000. It doesn't get funded. And so, 
So yeah, the next morning we turned it on, we, we push out the message. In fact, one other person that was really helpful, a gentleman named Chris Saka, he was a shark from Shark Tank, started yep. following Jim and a friend of a friend said, hey, Chris Saka is following you. I was like, cool, who's Chris Saka? They're like, he's a shark from Shark Tank. And I looked at him and he had Big you know, a, million, a million, million subscribers. And so I said, hey, if you wouldn't mind, like, would you mind pushing this message out? Or Jim, Jim said that and he's like, yeah, sure. And so when we launched it, you know, we just had like probably probably maybe a third to a half of the people we said, Hey, would you mind pushing the message? We're like, absolutely. And so that first day it was like, I remember, you know, I think by, we maybe launched at 6am by 7am we had like $3,000. So I was like, this is pretty cool. And then a, maybe an hour later, I was like, we have 10,000. And I think, I think by like midday, you know, where it's like 15,000. And so I call Jim. I'm like, you watching this? And Jim's like ecstatic. And I call my mom. I kid you not. My mom's like, is this some sort of a scam? She's like, you know, what, what's what's going on? What is what is Kickstarter? Have you gotten yourself in trouble? And I'm like, nope, no, this is how it is. And so it really, the campaign went really well. And so the next thing we did, once we saw, you know, it was working well, I go online and says, you know, what do you do when a Kickstarter campaign is going well, you start pushing some ads. So we yeah. you know, started playing around with Facebook and Instagram ads during the campaign. It was like you put a dollar in and ten dollars shoot back. Put another dollar in, ten dollars shoot back, and so we we bought quite a few ads. And something I didn't expect, um, and I, I'd read but didn't expect, the last day of the campaign did a hundred thousand dollars. It was bananas. just like people had waited, you know, kind of to the to the end, and so it was really rewarding. You know, it was really cool to have, I think a hunch of a story. You know, when I, when I heard, when I figured out that Jim was the guy, I was like, I can't believe this story hasn't been told. Like I was like giddy, you know, like just getting goosebumps of like, this, yeah. this is, this is incredible. He's the guy. And so anyways, that, that was the, that's how we got started. Okay. So just for audience perspective, Todd, you're not in publishing. You aren't actively out there looking for all kinds of these stories. No. You literally just kept seeing these, made the connection and were just generally curious. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's right. And, and yeah, it just became, you know, became, it was a passion project that took off. I mean, I feel very lucky, very fortunate, a passion project that just, just caught fire. Um, and I, I know that's not typical and, um, but yeah, we, we, we fought our way through it and then I've got some battle scars to show first time publisher <laughs> in the process. Okay. We'll definitely get into some of those or whatever you can share on that. Um, okay. I think the, I, I just, I'm going to sculpt this story just a little bit more and, and sort of put like some timelines on this. So we, you, you get to the point where the campaign is successful. Once the campaign closes and it's successful, you get to a point where you're like, what am I, what's the next step there? Like, what do you have to do? You got to get the book designed and printed, right? Right, right. Yeah. So we, um, sorry, we, we raised, so we raised the money on Kickstarter. Then it became very clear that we were probably, if we didn't deliver on the campaign promise, promise we were probably in some sort of federal jeopardy of imprisonment. Like, like, <laughs> like it's enough money that it's like, it was pr probably be like grand something, something, you know, felony <laughs> of like, so yeah. we're like, of, of course we always planned on doing it, but now it's like this, like we got to get rolling on this thing. And so, um, you know, the first, I think it was like a, a two, two part process. Like one was vetting printers, yeah. uh, number one. And then the other piece was, um, you know, just, just working very closely with Jim and our a graphic designer and literally laying the book out in the, uh, in, in design. Um, that's what we use. And, some of the challenges were just Jim had painted at all different ratios. And so actually picking the right aspect ratio of the book and, and kind of the layout and the template and kind of layering, getting that all down. Meanwhile, like working with a writer, Jason Blevins, who very well known in the ski business and getting him to, um, you know, like just kind of like call down the pictures and getting all the pieces starting to fit together. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we, and then it was like starting to think like, wow, when we thought it was a couple hundred people, by the way, when you do a Kickstarter campaign, they don't give you the mailing addresses of anybody. They only give you the email address. So you got to go like, yeah. collect all that information. Um, at a couple hundred people, no problem. At 5,500 people, like, how do you do that? Like, how do you get 5,500 people's shipping addresses? Like, where do you put them? Do you email them individually? Probably not. You probably want some Crazy. form, but you want that form to actually be tied to an e-commerce system so that like, then when you're ready to ship, so we, we um, stumbled upon Shopify, good Canadian yep. company, right? And used mm -hmm. to basically hacked our way to building Shopify as the 
kind of dummy platform for collecting email addresses. So we use MailChimp, um, which is an email provider. MailChimp send it out, you know, do a bunch of testing, make sure it actually works, um, collect the information. Uh, and then, you know, then you got to find a fulfillment vendor. Cause like now all of a sudden graphic comms like, Hey, um, where do you want the book shipped? And you're like, <laughs> yeah, great question. Great you know, so, question guys. So we, question. We, we found a, a third party logistics company that, um, that we use to kind of get the Kickstarter backers books out. Um, that would be September of I think 2019, September of 2019, the books landed in the U S I got a great picture. I got an advanced airship pallet of books of my son standing on top of it in the front yard because uh, we wanted to get some media books out. We, we probably sent 250 books out to media and anybody we could think of or friends of friends and just kind of get the word out of the, the book. Um, so the book, the yeah, the book, the so, shop books. Sorry, just to pause you there for a second. Yep. When you're printing 5,500 like thick, big books, like how many pallets of that? are we talking about that you had to find a home for? Yeah, the books were, um, I think, it, I think our first run was maybe 10 or 15,000 books. Okay. I think we might've done 10 cause we knew <laughs> after Kickstarter, yeah. we waited about two weeks and we're like, why don't we just continue pre-selling? So we continued pre-selling. I think we pre-sold another 5,000 books in the next six months. Wow. And so I think we had maybe 15,000 in the first order. I think 15,000 is three shipping containers. Jeez. Yeah. So we had a lot of paper coming from Italy. That's a lot of paper. Oh, one detail you'll like, uh, we, and we just, you know, this is, you just kind of find it out along the way. My partner, Ben Farrow, uh, co-founder of open road ski company figured out we had a signed, it, we offered a signed edition for the book. So you could either get a, a signed or unsigned. And then we also, which was really cool, but a total pain was to get every backer's name in the book. So also collecting 5,500 names for print that are wow making sure that they are um uh rated g right <laughs> like you yes. can't really screen those lists and make sure nothing slips through so we did the um but the signature when you're thinking like you're going to sell a couple hundred copies and maybe 20 of those are going to be signed all of a sudden you got like 2000 signed books and so you're like or not 2000 maybe 1500 like yeah. Why, what are we going to, what are we going to do? We yeah, like that's like send all these you books okay sitting down for open, a week or two, open them, open them up and, you know, crack the book. And so what we ended up doing is working with the printer. And this was, was, was great about Graphicom. Um, and, and my partner, Ben figured this out. I mean, really, really cool. And I'm, you know, there's moments where you're like, I hope this works. And it did Graphicom sent 2000 pages to Jim's house. Just he signed months. the pages and then they tipped them back into the book. Yeah, which was just awesome oh, yeah. and so happy that it worked <laughs> because <laughs> you're like, otherwise, what if it doesn't work? Yeah, yeah, otherwise him dealing with like 1,500 books, like actual books in a warehouse somewhere, right? You know. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Okay, so 15,000 books. Um, so let's get into the book. Um, I think we've talked a little bit about some of the logistics, and we might come back to some of that. But let's let's dive into this book and the creation of this book. Um, and, and where I really want, um, the value to be in this podcast for a, a graphic design audience listening is what it takes to create something like this and mm -hmm. what goes into it, how certain decisions are made. So like, let's get into the specs of the book. What's the size of this thing? What kind of paper did you guys land on and why? Gosh, that's a great question. Um, let me get the copy of the book. Yeah. So the book is, I think we landed at about 11 by 11 and a half. Okay. Um, we tested it. Um, you know, part of the process was we, you know, went to physical bookstores and just, I bought a ton of books, you know, and just found that size. And the original size was about an inch smaller. It was about a 10 by 10. And I like that. There's a book by Michael Beirut called um, How To. I think that's his mm -hmm. book. Really, really great book. And I just love the feel. Let me grab that one. Yeah. So Michael Beirut's book is kind of this like 10 by 10 and just, it's just a great, really great graphic design book. If you, if you haven't seen it, I would highly, highly recommend this. It's just fantastic. 
this really, really good book. Um, so we just, you know, bought a lot of books and um, you start looking at the page counts and, um, you know, the printer will send you samples. They'll send you a bunch of samples and like you just start to get to play with it. And you're like, all right, what do you like about this paper? What don't you like? And you just, you know, talk about it, do some research. Um, mm -hmm. I think we ended up with 150 gram. Um, I think the paper is a, I think it was a light coating on it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, it's a pretty flat paper. Like yeah. there's not, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of texture to it, which so uh, not like for, a natural uncoated paper, definitely a yeah. flat, smooth surface, but dull, not like a high gloss. No, not a high gloss. Mm -mm. No, no, definitely a matte finish. Um, I think that was just like test printing some different, different, uh, products or different, you know, maps on it and just to see what looked good. Mm. Um, you know, you, you know, and then, you know, some of this is like the printer is like, great. What do you want for end papers? You're like, right. End paper, you know, <laughs> cool. good, good call. Well, what do you, what are, what are our choices? Yeah. What you know, do we want for that? Yeah. You know, we spent a lot of time on the cover, um, and, and a shout out to our designer, Corey Grosser and associates in LA. Um, you know, his vision was, and, and we didn't want a dust jacket. We just, I, I, I think dust jackets are goofy and just something you throw away. Mm -hmm. Um, but we wanted, we wanted a book that could, could fit in a room and not be too ostentatious. Like you yeah. feel, it would feel good there. So we ended up going with this black and white cover and the black and white cover only the only color on it is actually the red ski lines. So like, if you look closely, you can see the red lift lines, which is akin That's to cool. what you see on a map, but this is a sketch. This is a full sketch of big sky mountain in Montana of Jim's, um, of what he does. So he does a full sketch prior to starting over and doing the painting. Wow. And so we, we just kind of did a wrap color cover on that. And then we've got a little bit of an embossed um, or debossed, maybe I can't remember which, of just the, the indent of the name, yep. the man behind the maps. And so, you know, we got, I mean, we did a ton of samples. Like we did so many samples, like what saturation of the cover, like how much to make the pencil pop and, you know, make that title fit just kind of in that nook underneath the mountain and, yep. you know, and get our logo there on the bottom, which is kind of cool. So it was, you know, I think it's, I think it's, I think a curiosity, right? A curiosity of kind of looking at it, you know, the nice thing about a book versus maybe say an app or something else, like with the book being such an established industry, there's so many people that actually know it and have the expertise that were mm -hmm. <laughs> thankfully guided us in the process a little bit. Um, but you can also get a bunch and just look at it and be like, what do I like? And, and we, you know, we really did. We made, we made a book that we liked um, we were pretty sure other people would like it, but you know, the cover obviously is like, that's a big process. Yeah. No kidding. The whole book is a huge process and designing that and putting all that artwork together. Um, so you had said that you guys did some test printing. So you went out to, once you decided on, was a Graphicom? Is that what they were yep. called? Yep. Once you decided on the vendor, you went out and said, look, let's get some test prints on a few different papers so we can make a decision and, and know where to go with this. Yeah, some of that we did prototyped um, locally with a local print shop called The Color Group in Seattle okay. and just got got some reps there um, yep. because they could just kind of rip it off pretty quickly. Graphicom did send, you know, they, they'll they send you an entire set of the books, you know, and then you got to mark them up, color correction. You know, you're like, oh, we got to do color correction. Cool, let's sit down with the designer, you know, and go through all the pages, mark them up, yeah. ship them back, FedEx. Uh, that was kind of like an old school process, but yeah, you, you know, we kind of used a mix of local production. You, I went to a, the equivalent of a Kinko's one time and printed out the book at the concept at 10 by 10 and 11 by 11. And you kind of look at it and you're like, yep, no, 11 by 11 is the right, right size. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it just feels right with that at that size. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want to now get into a little bit of the costs on this thing. If you're able to share some of that stuff, like really, and the purpose of this question is to remove a little bit of the sticker shock that a designer might face when they are creating print because print is a tangible thing. It's a beautiful thing. And when you do it right with nice materials, it costs money. Like it costs yep. real money. Yep. So when we're doing 15,000 books, printing them in Italy, hardcover bound, beautiful books, like how much does that cost? Yeah. You're, you're, you know, you're looking, it depends on obviously the volume for sure. bigger, the volume, the better, you know, but you're looking at, um, you're probably looking at around $15 a book. Yeah. So $15 a book. If we're, if we're estimating $15 a book times 15,000, you're in for what is that? Three hundred grand. 
Mm, is that right? No, a little less. Two twenty five. Two twenty five. Okay, about two hundred twenty five thousand bucks. Which you know, again, back to Kickstarter, like we would have never fronted that much money without knowing no. a there was a market or b we had the cash. Yeah. They, they, wire, they, they wire the money to you. So you're like, you're all of a sudden going from, boy, I'm not sure to, why wouldn't we order 15,000 copies? <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. That's, that's incredible. So, but that's 15 bucks a book. What do the books sell for? Uh, we sell for 90. 90 bucks. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, I think at Kickstarter, we, we started at 75 and have ratcheted the price up. Yeah, definitely. Kickstarter, you know, the first time in, you always give a good deal. Um, you know, get more people are saving money. That's why they're, you know, diving into the Kickstarter. That's why they're taking advantage of that opportunity. Um, so I thought now might be a good time, Todd, to pull up some pictures I have of the book and just sort of scroll through page by page and not not the whole book page by page, obviously, but a few photos that I have here and just sort of talk to those specific pages and anything that comes to mind for you. Sure on what was sort of unique. All right, let's just start right at the top here. So is this early on in the book or it looks kind of like it's near the end? Yeah, this is the end. This is the Snow Country Magazine section. So Jim was commissioned by a, a magazine that no longer exists called Snow, Mon Snow Country Magazine. And this is okay. a, um, a view of Breckenridge, the town of Breckenridge, a ski area in Colorado. Yep. And so it's one of those kind of landscape views, not necessarily a trail map per se, but just kind of a, a mountain scenery. Yeah, I like it. It's got the town in front of it there. And the yeah. other thing, you know, I got really nerdy about in this is you can kind of see like a little bit of like the screen values come together to create the print. Like some of the, you see the CMYK colors kind of come together in some of the areas, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we used a five plate process uh, in it. I think we had a, um, yeah, kind of your standard CMYK. And then um, we had one for the, you'll see it in a few seconds, the, um, the, the page break we to get that really specific blue. I think we yeah. ended up paying for another uh, plate to to run or to, one more color to run specifically that color. Yeah, to hit that. And a lot of Pantone swatches, a lot of like <laughs> a lot of back and forth on trying to get that just right. Yeah. So how many pages total is the book? Uh, we're just shy of 300, I think 292, just shy of 300. That is bananas. And what type of printing is this book? Is, did it go web or was it, um, was it offset? Oh, offset. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely That's offset. Awesome. So you're, you're approximately eight pages per signature or, or on a press sheet. Yeah, I think that's right. Yep. Yep. Now you have these beautiful sort of full page, um, or double spread maps of yep. each resort that's beautiful yeah this is big sky so this is the same one that's on the cover this is the, the cover was the sketch the detailed yep. sketch and this is the final painting or print uh -huh. uh, or color and so what jim would do is um just as a designer you might find this interesting he would do the full sketch and then he takes a picture of it projects that picture against his final surface does a light outline of that sketch on his final surface and then goes puts it all aside and just starts painting mm -hmm. that's beautiful so then we've got a close up of the cover here with his signature down in the front corner of it. Yeah. Yeah. An incredible sketch. Like you can see the pencil lines. Yeah. And, and that's kind of cool. One of the reasons I like the sketches is you, it, it's a little bit looser. Um, his images are almost photorealistic. So at distance, you, you probably would look at it and say, geez, is that a picture or a painting? Yeah. Um, with the, with the sketches, it's very clear. Like this is, this was done by hand. Yeah. But like <laughs> just incredibly done. Yeah, yeah. In detail that I can't even fathom. I, I just, I would not even be able to create something like this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a cover shot there, and you can see the, I think debossed. If I got my terminology right on that. Yeah, it cover. looks looks pressed in for the debossed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. So he's got the red ski lines highlighted, just like you were saying. So it's just black, um, black and red. Yeah. For the print of this thing, there you get a good view of the size here in that very square format, which would feel really nice in the hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're almost perfectly square. I think we're maybe slightly, maybe uh, a half inch wider than we all we are tall. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. What yeah, this shot. Um, yeah, good good view of the spine. That's the good one on the interior. Um, 
I think we saw a couple of slides back. You saw that blue, that kind of really deep blue that we used for the, yeah. that separate plate. And that's the, that's the chapter break. So we did that. So you kind of see that as well. Like when you look on the, on the side of the book, you can kind of get a little bit of that um, kind of texture, which is mostly white, but you see some of that blue that's bleeding out from those yeah. chapter breaks. That's really kind of nice. Cool. All right, Todd. So you had mentioned um, that you guys are on your sixth printing of this book right now. Yeah, that's right. So how many books do you think you got like have, have sold so far since this launched in late 2019? Uh, we're, we're over 50,000. Over 50,000 copies of this out there. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. We've done, we've done maybe 95% has all been direct to consumer. Yeah. And so where can people find the book? Um, the best place to go is jamesnehues.com. Okay. So you, your order there that's built on a background of Shopify and then fulfilled by our third party vendor. Okay. Um, you can also go to amazon.com in the U S uh, Canada. We are not in Amazon. Um, so you in Canada, you'd have to buy from jamesnehues.com. Okay. Uh, this is, yeah. Um, Amazon, we actually do, uh, we, we have a merchant store, a merchant storefront on Amazon. So what that mm -hmm. means is essentially we're selling the book, um, we also give Amazon the inventory and we use their fulfilled by Amazon program. So they actually ship the books uh, and they're incredibly efficient at that. So we, we, we send pile pa pallets of books to Amazon and they, they'll ship and send them for us uh, for the sales that we make on that channel. Yeah. Really great. Um, you know, and, and we've done that predominantly just to maintain pricing, right? You know, if we went to a wholesaler, they, or sold directly to Amazon, um, good for us, we wouldn't take the inventory risk, but, um, or the cash flow risk, but but they can market to whatever they want. So it's been a way for us to maintain our pricing. Mm -hmm. Love that. So I want to just go back a little bit to the production of this book because you were printing overseas in Italy. You know, you did a little bit of test printing and test work locally in sort of Seattle area. Yep. But did you guys go to Italy for press checks of this thing to really see yeah. how it all came together? Yeah, not me, but my partner, Ben, um, he, he went to Italy for, gosh, I think he was there for four days, uh, maybe five, just doing the press checks. And, you know, again, I think working with an industry that's been around for a while and a, and a good vendor, um, yeah. you go to press check and he'd never press checked anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's, you know, sitting there as they, each plate rolls off. Do you like this? Do we need to adjust any colors? And you keep going. Yeah. Yeah. But that awesome. was, that was something that we learned of, of the process. Yeah. Press check. Okay. Yeah. We're going to go do a press check. I don't know. Should we? Yeah. I guess, I guess we probably should since it's so many books. Um, we did yeah. press check for the first, first printing. We have not done any press checks after. Yeah. No, go on. The first is done. Then you establish the color values and you know, it kind of comes out more or less consistent for each one things like that. Yeah. Save the settings, so, right? Earlier on in the proofing stage, did you guys go get hard copy proofs and things like that from the printer in Italy, or was all of the sort of hard copy proofing done on site? Um, we got no, we got we got a hard proof set for color correction. Yeah, yeah. So we got that, and so you, you, we'd sent that back and forth a couple iterations on that, and then the stack of papers that come back just gets narrower and narrower as you kind of lock that in. Yeah. Um, We've got, you know, we got the binding, like we got uh, and that kind of printed binding as a separate piece. So we kind of saw the pieces of it. We saw the, what are these called? The catalogs, like the each. Um, uh, sign signatures? Signature, each signature, excuse me. Yep. yep. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to make a mockery of the craft. I, I, I hey, No, like, no, it's all good. These it, are it, it got a little fuzzy as we were building this. It's like, oh my God, what is this next thing we got to do? But we got all the signatures back, so pre-binding. So we get, essentially got the cover and the signature. So we got it all unbound and had a chance to flip through that. Wow. So where is Jim located? You're down in Long Beach. Where's Jim? Yep. Jim's in Colorado. So Jim's in Colorado. So did you guys ever like meet to review proofs together or was it just shipping back and forth or how did that all work? Yeah, we sent, I think we sent Jim a copy. I think we all got a copy of the proofs mm -hmm. um, to keep it tight. But the designer and I did the color proofing. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like the layout, I think Jim saw he got his own set of proofs and um, didn't have too many comments because we'd reviewed a lot of the digital files in advance. So mm -hmm. he, was, he was pretty happy. But yeah, definitely kept him in the mix as we went through. Wow. Okay, so through all of this process of building this book, what is what are maybe one or two things that you found most most surprising out of it, or things that you didn't expect that really surprised you? Um, I think I mean, um, it sounds like lots of things at this point. I mean, 
I'll say two, I guess probably two things. One, the power of, uh, of direct marketing yeah. via social media is, has been very, very powerful for us. You know, we probably run, I would guess, I mean, we probably run 50 to a hundred million ads. Like, I mean, just like crazy numbers of ads. I probably can look it up. Um, if I had to guess, like just in, insane numbers. And you know, the, the cool thing is like when you have a product that's working, there was a lot of the comments start social proofing yeah. the ad, which is rare. Like you don't, it's rare to see an ad for a product that has a lot of comments on it, but every once in a while you'll see it in the feed. And so I think that was surprising at how good AK and then also how much time people are clearly spending on social media. Um, so that was very powerful for us. And, and, uh, and then the other was just the, um, fulfillment. So our first fulfillment vendor, um, they, after receiving the books, it took them three weeks to get the first book out the door. And then we had a batch of books that was like their fifth day in, they couldn't find like the post office didn't have them. So we got all these like tracking numbers that are not showing up moving hundreds and hundreds of orders that are not showing up moving. And so it, after about a month and a half, we realized we got to get rid of these guys. They literally can't handle it. And so now you're getting towards the end of November and at the end of November, Christmas is coming and like, Oh my God, how are we going to pull all this off? And so to speed the story up, we, um, we had another in our, we had our second shipment of books coming in. It landed like December 2nd. We found a great, uh, husband and wife team that helped us in shipping reroute those shipping containers away from our fulfillment vendor to a new fulfillment vendor in Pennsylvania. Uh, we pulled all our inventory out. We had a truck show up at our original fulfillment vendors docks, called them the night before and said, Hey, we're pulling all, all this stuff out. They were like, well, we got a bunch of bills to sell. We're like, uh, uh books out first, got those books up to Pennsylvania. We were dark for four days. I think December 2nd through the 5th. Yep. Again, during Christmas, on the hunch and belief that we were going to get these things out the door to make it into people's homes. And somehow, uh, kudos to my partner, Ben, uh, for pulling it off. Um, that was stressful. That was really stressful. I mean, we, we, we peaked that holiday season, maybe 900 units a day. Yeah. So we're, we're running 900 units a day and we're just getting into a new fulfillment house, hoping they can pull it off. And, and they, they did a very nice job. <laughs> Cause that's one thing that, you know, when you're creating something, you know, printed, it's one thing to do the design and select materials. It's another thing to print it and, and get it made into a real object, but there's an entire logistical process afterwards to actually get it to somebody's door especially if you're going to sell direct, you know, yeah. we, we, we wanted to sell direct. Um, you know, if you were able to get a distri distribution partner, like then you're just selling pack pallets of books to a distribute a distributor, like whomever, but it just seemed like, um, you know, we knew the product was niche enough that we could probably reach the customers. We had some success in Kickstarter reaching customers. So we validated that social media was working for us. We continued to pre-sell via, social media ads until books landed. So it was like, let's just keep this train going. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. Wow. That's incredible. What a massive undertaking for like first time, um, that first time publisher, like incredible undertaking. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> we, 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 we had great luck, great success and, uh, some moments of like, is, was the ship going to sink? Like we had a, <laughs> Really, I mean, I don't say that for, like it was just like I'm not sure where this is going to pull out. Like this is yeah. a problem. And yet, you, we we had a couple of those. I think the fulfillment, the first fulfillment vendor was one of them. I think once we had you know five thousand email addresses, like oh my god, what do we do with this? You know, and and knowing that like if you collect email addresses in a bad digital process and you have a twenty percent error rate, that's a thousand emails you have to hand sort. That's um, so much work. Uh, customer service again, shout out to Ben Farrow for, I mean, he literally did all customer service for the first year and a half. We just brought someone on to help like start sorting through the emails, mm -hmm. getting us out of like the weeds, but you know, we, we built it and felt it and, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. The publishing side is not for the faint of heart. It's it, but it can totally be done. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what's next? What's next for open road ski company? Uh, we've got, um, 
we've got one project that we're not quite yet ready to announce, but um, mm -hmm. it has to do with, there'll be a very cool design component. It's not necessarily paper design, but there's a cool design component. So um, more to come on that front. Um, but with Jim, we, I can share a couple projects we've got. Uh, he's, he's kind of turned his focus from painting ski areas to um, beautiful, iconic American landscapes. So cool. he has been during COVID doing a sketch series of America's greatest landscapes. So think Yosemite and Yellowstone and all these, you know, storied places. So we'll be launching that print series next month. I'm starting to roll that out to, you know, his fans. We've got over, you know, 50,000 plus folks who have purchased with us. So we have a great email list. He's got 52,000 followers on Instagram. So, um, you know, we got, you know, folks have a lot of passion for the national park. So it'll be a great way to kind of expand his story. And then, um, uh, you know, we've, we just last year, we had some success with, um, a, a ski area called Mad River Glen back in Vermont. Mad River Glen is just kind of like an iconic, uh, East coast ski area. And they, uh, they wanted to, James Nehu's trail map. And so when they reached out, Brad Noble from their board of directors reached out and said, Hey, we really, we want to do a ski map. I said, I got a deal for you. Why does an open road ski company pay for the map? We'll give you the digital asset of the map. And then we'll do a Kickstarter for you guys around the map and we'll give you all the money. And he was like, why would you do that? I was like, <laughs> cause we're kind of ski nerds and we think it's cool. So we ended up raising $125,000 on Kickstarter for Mad River Glen, which was just, it's just really another kind of, fun and we knew our systems on Kickstarter a little bit much yeah. smaller. I think maybe we had a couple hundred backers. I can't remember yeah. much less than 5,000. Um, so yeah, well, I think we'll continue on with Jim um, on the, on the print side. We've got a, a new business that will uh, hopefully launch here in the next couple of months. And we'll mm -hmm. be in, we'll, uh, we'll give you a shout when that's ready to go public. Cool. That'd be really cool. So two last questions before I wrap up here, just about the, about that ski book project. Um, from that first conversation with Jim, where you're like, Hey, I think, I think there's something here. Let, let's tell this story in this book format to holding the first copy in your hand. What's that time frame? Oh boy. I think, I think I reached out to him four years ago in March. So that would have been 2017. Yeah. And the first book I think was in hand, I think June, like completed book, June of 2018. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe June or July. So no, 2019. 2019. So it took about a year to get to know Jim and his wife and for him to say, okay, let's do it. So I'd say maybe March, 2017 to March, 2018 was about, Hey, we'll do this. Mm -hmm. Um, October of 2018, we launched Kickstarter and summer of 2019. So the, the turn from Jim's like, let's do this, which would have been March, 2018 to book in hand. It's about 18 months, 18 months, man. So what is the, what's the feeling when you finally hold the first physical copy in your hand? It was pretty cool. Yeah. I will say, yeah, I mean, I think just to, to see that it was, that it came to fruition and, and we were proud of it. I'll be honest. I don't think I've actually sat down with a book. I don't think I've actually sat down and, and spent, you know, a couple hours having proofed it digitally yep. mm -hmm. and in the pr production process for an untold number of hours. Yeah, I'm sure there is an error in there somewhere. No one's, <laughs> no, no one has brought it up yet. Yep. So, um, it, so is it a fear thing that you haven't gone through it? Is it fear? No, no. I, I just, I had touched it and saw it so many times. Yeah. Like I'll crack it open maybe like, you know, to show somebody like, oh, you know, hey, look at the book. Yeah. But I haven't just sat down and just thumbed through it. No, I, I, no, I just, I think, uh, nor have I read it um, after all of the rounds of proofing. You know, that's another thing when we, you know, we learned in the process, like, you know, structural editing getting a good structural editor to make sure like the broad stroke storyline makes sense mm -hmm. down to someone who kind of like is really more within the paragraph, making yeah. sure the paragraphs are working and then all the way down to like a detailed copy writer mm -hmm. proofer. Um, we, I think we used three different people and didn't realize there was that level of specialty. And some people are really good at the broad and some people are really good at the hyper detail. So that was, mm -hmm. that was fun to learn in the process as well. 
Awesome. So, so tell the last question I want to leave you with, and I want to end on a high note here. Um, what was the single most fulfilling moment through the entire process? I think, I think day one of Kickstarter was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was going from some, like it, it quickly became, that was like when we realized we were going from something that was like a non thing to a thing. Yeah. I think that was it. And then, um, maybe th the next month, uh, we went, my business partner and I, um, a photographer to do some studio shots and the writer went to Jim's studio in Colorado mm -hmm. and getting a chance to like, to be in that room with Jim and like all of us looking at each other, like, I can't believe this happened. You know, it was just that, <laughs> that, that like that it's that like, you know, it was just, that was like a really cool thing. And then getting a chance to see his originals and you're like, man, how lucky are we the ones that he chose to help tell his story because his, yeah. his details is, is incredible. Mm -hmm. It's really, really cool. What an absolute hidden gem. Yeah, very lucky. Yeah. Todd, this has been um, a very exciting conversation. And I get fired up about things like this where a great story is brought to life visually and shared with the world in such a cool format. Not just here's his online portfolio, but brought together in a book that could literally live for centuries and be passed down through families. Um, you know, what a, just what an incredible thing to put this into print and put it out there. Yeah. Thanks Dave. It, it's been a lot of fun. Do you have a copy of the book by chance? No, I don't. Wonderful. Well, afterwards, uh, please send me your address and we'll I'll be glad to get you a copy. I think you'll really enjoy it. Oh, I'd really appreciate that. That's great. And I'll make sure that when it arrives and so we get a nice unboxing video and a reveal and, and get that all put together because it deserves at least that. Oh, fun. Right on. Awesome. Well, Todd, I'm going to let you back to your family this evening. Thank you so much for taking the time to walk us through this process and share those, those absolute highs and those like gut punch lows and, um, and, and just about the journey to create this object. So thank you so much. My pleasure, Dave. Thanks for having me.